My chair is squeaky. Hello, everyone. I think I'm live. I think I'm live. I think I'm live. Say hello. Somebody say hello. Let me see if I can see my comments. There you go. Hey, Jumps. How are you? Hey, girls. Welcome. Thank you for coming on and joining me. Oh, my nail account. He's great on Capitol with you. Um, you said all the count. Really red. Yeah, I got red. I got red. I got red. So I am going to go and we're just going to do some skincare tonight because I'm really sore. I fell at work today. Um, my neck is killing me. My elbow, my wrist. I, I cut open my wrist a little bit. My knee. So it was not a good day. Hello, Carolyn. Hey, Kaylee. Hi, Tia. Hi, Diana. How is everybody? So I'm just going to go and do some skincare and take off this mess of a face right now. So today was not a good day for me at all. Um, just, you know, one of those days. I don't, I don't know how to explain it. You know, uh, I don't know. Just wasn't a good day. Everybody's got a good day and a bad day. And I always try every single day to make every day a good day. So I'm going in right now and I'm going to use this makeup remover first. And we're just going to go and put this all over our face. I'm going to take off all of our makeup, all of our mascara, our brows. We're going to take off everything and this is a cream or an oil it's almost like an olive oil it smells good i think it's a berry i don't remember who makes it but it takes off all of your makeup so welcome guys i hope that you all had a great day um my day started out bad because the very first thing is when i got to work um I wasn't rushing. Let me just make that clear. I was not rushing. Uh, I got to work and I went to go out of my nail room and go to make some coffee and I wiped out on the floor. Fell on my elbow and my knee and my whole side, so I'm kind of sore. Um, I think I'm going to be a lot more sore tomorrow. Let's just put it that way. Usually... Right, the next day is the day that you feel it. So I think tomorrow I'm gonna be feeling it. Um, not that I'm not sore right now because I am. I'm gonna go in and dunk some water into a, onto a washcloth. Normally you would do this over your sink, but since I got all you guys on here with me, I'm just gonna go and take this all off with a washcloth. I'm going to take off all this makeup. Ugh, it feels so good to get it all off. Hey, Amanda. How are you, lovey? I hope everybody's doing good. Ugh. I'm just doing a skincare today. I'm using my Atomy products, which I absolutely love. If you've ever gone and gotten a facial and they've used Atomy products on you, you know that Atomy is one of the best on the market. I love Atomy products. Ever since I had my own salon um, and they were doing facials, we've always used Atomy. So I'm just hooked on the product. I love it. My skin loves it. So I just took off all of my makeup using a, a bowl of water. <laughs> a bowl of water, and this was called Very Cherry Clean Makeup Melt Away Cleansing Balm. That's what I use to take off my makeup. And I'm just going to go in and make sure that I'm looking a little cloudy right now. I can't say things are cloudy. <laughs> so I'm going to go like that. And now I'm going to go and wait a couple seconds, let this dry, and I'm going to do a peel-off mask 
because my face really needs a mask super badly. I haven't done a mask in a long time. Oh, I'm sorry, Amanda, your cat passed away. I'm sorry to hear that, boo. So what I'm using now is, um, I love this, Nassif MD, pharmaceuticals, dermatologist, detox pads, complexion perfecting pads. Um, they come in this big jar. As a matter of fact, this is my last one. I've got to get more. You don't want to use this underneath your eyes because it is a drying agent. You don't want to go underneath your eyes with it because that is the most tender area of your skin. So I'm just going in. I look a little bit red, probably because I'm a little bit sunburned from having my top down yesterday, as well as Tia. I know Tia was sunburned as well. We were driving around, cruising around, going to the stores and stuff, and we wound up um, it was great. We were driving on the highway and all that stuff, and the sun was out. The sun was blasting. Who is Alinda? Oh, Belinda. I'm like, who's Alinda? Okay, so I'm going to let this dry, and I'm going to show you this really, really cool peel-off mask. I'm going to let it dry. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. We're going to let it dry. Um, I guess I should go first and do a deep cleanser, I guess, right? Let's do a deep cleanser. So I'm going to go in with the Atomy Deep Cleanser. I'm going to put some on. And all you do is you rub it into your face. And it's a deep cleanser. You can use it either um, with the foaming cleanser or you can use it without the foaming cleanser. So I'm not gonna use it with the foaming cleanser because I just took off all my makeup and I'm just gonna rub this in and really get my skin hydrated. You're still sunburned? Oh, it's gonna be like that a couple days, Tia. You know how it takes a while to start tanning and everything. So this is the deep cleanser and I love this because you'll see it. You really want to go and get that skin. You want to be a little rough on your face, not hurting, but you want to get that blood circulating to your face. I go underneath my chin, and then I go like this, and I push out and up, out and up. Out and up, push, push, push. Rosie, is my Rosie Bacala in the house? Where's Rosie tonight? Is she in here? There she is. I see you. I see you, Rosie. You didn't have to do it in all capitals. I see you, boo. Grooch. My Grooch is in the house. Hello, everybody. So I'm just going and deep cleansing my face. Hi, Robin. How are you? How are you, Rosie Bacala? Okay, so see how my face is like getting a little bit red? It's not red, it's getting rosy. We're getting a little rosy posy. And I'm just gonna go and stick my washcloth back in. I'm gonna squeeze it out. And I'm gonna go and clean off all of this face with the deep cleanser. Oh, it feels so good. I can't even tell you how good this feels, especially, you know, doing nails all day and getting all of that, you know, when you're doing nails like I've been doing for so many years, you don't realize all the dust particles and everything gets clogged in your pores. So I always make sure that I take good care of my skin, especially after doing um, a full day of nails, even though today wasn't a full day. It wasn't that busy at all. But hopefully we will pick up. So there's that. I'm going to grab a towel and I'm going to just dry my face with a towel. And I'm just going to pat it dry. Hi, Sharon. Oh, gosh, your husband... Come on, hit the C more. Come on, you flipping bugana. Are they both in the hospital, Sharon? 
Yes, let's get a prayer chain going, girls. Let's get a prayer chain going. Let's get that prayer chain going because you know they work. You know they work, right? All right, we're going to put a peel-off mask on. And this is also by Atomy, which I love. We use this in my other salon that I worked in in Cary, North Carolina. So I'm going to go in. And I'm going to use my fingers, okay? Usually you don't have to use your fingers, but you can use a silicone. Um, I actually have one right here. I should be using it. I'll use it. Ah, oh, why not? A silicone applicator. And you're just going to go and we're just going to put it all on our face like so. And this is a peel off, so you want to make sure that it's nice and even. Yes, let's say prayers. How are you, Grooch? How you been, my boobala? I miss you, Grooch. I miss you. I hope everything's going okay with you. Um, I don't really, sometimes I don't get to see people on here, and people get mad at me. And I'm sorry if I, like, Rosie, I, I know Rosie's usually on here with me every single time I come on, but... The other day, I guess she was calling me, and I didn't see her, like, a gazillion times. So, Rosie, I told her last night, I said, Rosie, I'm sorry. I says, usually I get to see everybody, but when I was using the two phones, it was very, very hard. Very hard to keep track of comments. So, if I'm missing anybody, I'm sorry. They're home taking care. Okay, good. At least they're home, Sharon, because you know what? I think you're better off being home. I think you're better off being home than being in the hospital when it comes to the flu and the COVID. So whether it's the flu or the COVID, I think you're better off um, being home. And plus, you're always more comfortable at home and you can rest while you're at home. When you're in the hospital, you can't rest for nothing when you're in the hospital. They come in, they're taking your blood, they're taking your vitals, right? So this is the peel-off mask. It's not going to take long at all. So I know a lot of you are going, oh my God, it's going to take forever for her to get this off. It's not. And this is one of the peel-off masks that I absolutely love. I don't put any of it near my eyes because you don't want to peel off any of the natural oils that are by your under eyelid area, <laughs> if that makes sense. Under eyelid area. So I'm just cleaning up the silicone. Hold on. The applicator. Let me clean it. Make sure it's all, my fingers are all sticky. Okay, I'm going to dry this. And um, so, yeah, so today was a good day as far as I love my clients, no matter who they are. I love um, making them feel happy and making them feel pampered. Whenever you're working in a salon or a spa, you always want to make sure that your client comes first, their needs come first, and um, that they're happy and that they're satisfied when they leave. And sometimes, and I'll, I'll say this, sometimes Clients will leave and they will not be happy for whatever reason, for whatever reason. They might not be happy, um, but you'll never know unless they tell you. So if they don't tell you, you're never going to know, right? So, and then all of a sudden, it's like it's coming out of the woodworks. Everybody's coming and, and saying, oh, well, this nail is chipped or this one doesn't look good. I just redid my nails again. This one I did different. This one I did half marble and half plain. So I redid this nail today. I was just bored. So I redid that one and that's just a marbleize. The other ones I did half marble and I did the other half with the, um, the foils. But I also added some diamond stones on that ring, on that finger, and some diamond stones on that one. So if you could see, I did that on the side, and then this side is all of the tape. So I 
marbleize that area, and that side is the foil. This one we did just clear, and I just did the marbleizing on that one. So my set is like banging right now because I had three hours in between appointments today and I was like bored out of my mind. I can't come home because I live so far away from the nail, from the nail salon. So I had to kind of like sit there. So thank you, Christina. I'm glad you like it. Oh, uh-oh, what happened, Jump? She got hurt doing a trampoline? Thank you, Groot. Yeah, I'm kind of loving it. I'm kind of loving it as well. So, I did a bunch of people, you know, over the last week. And some people are just, you know, they weren't happy. You know, and I guess you can't make everybody happy, right? Like the saying goes, you can't make everybody happy. But I will say this. They were, they were um, justified in why they were not happy. I will say that. They were justified. Because I think that um, the product, the, the gel polish that is at the salon... I think that it's old, and I think it expired, and I think that possibly, now this is just my opinion, um, sometimes you use lacquer thinner or nail thinner, nail polish thinner, and you use it so much that the gel is no good anymore. It's kind of like, you know, you're putting the, the lacquer thinner or the uh, nail polish thinner in the in the nail polish and you do it so much that it ain't gel anymore so even when you go to cure it underneath the light what happens it's not going to cure fully because it really isn't gel anymore did you tia oh that's awesome yeah tia's nails and her feet came out awesome we did tia and tia did my toes yesterday <laughs> so Tia's got the cutest little feet I ever did see. The cutest little feet I ever did see. So I'm going to tell you some products that I absolutely love, especially for your face. Because we, you know, normally we're just doing hair. We're doing makeup. We're doing nails, right? We're doing our nails, which I've been doing a lot of lately. And we haven't done skincare. And I really want you guys to know what I love. And you know I love Atomy products. But I will also say L'Oreal has this new product out. And it is called Revitalift. And I'm sure a lot of you have heard of it. You've probably seen the commercials. Um, and I love it. It's got 1.5% of hyaluronic acid. And you know that hyaluronic acid is my thing. So this is what it looks like, and you use it twice a day. You use it in the morning, and you use it at night, okay? It's L'Oreal Paris Revital Lift. It is not cheap. I'll tell you that right now. It is not cheap, but it works. If you have fine lines and wrinkles, this is the bomb diggity, okay? This is the bomb diggity. I also use this SPFRX, which is vitamin C, 15 plus it's an antioxidant serum which also has 15 percent um vitamin c it's got the alpha hydroxy it's got the uh hyaluronic acid it's got a brightener in it it's got a calming toner in it it smooths the texture of your skin this my lovies you can get on amazon okay you can also get the um, the Revital Lift on Amazon, but I wound up going into Target and getting it in Target. So if you have, why is it good for your skin? Because the hyaluronic acid is the only product on the market other than going and paying for, let's say, um, a chemical peel or... Um, uh, what's the other one? Not the chemical peel. The chemical peel is one, and the other one is the... 
microdermabrasion, where it's going to go and get rid of or minimize the look of fine lines and wrinkles. Hyaluronic acid, if you use it twice a day, just like this Revital Lift, okay, um, twice a day, you're going to see within one week a difference in your fine lines and wrinkles, okay? It's amazing, amazing. A hydrofacial, yes. To hold her ass. Ladies, you know Jesse wants you to hold her ass? What? Retin-A, well, Retin-A used to be like the thing. The only thing that I don't like about Retin-A is it burns. That's, on my skin, it burns. I'm not a big Retin-A person. Yeah, Christina, serve you. Lotion, yes, that works really well. I've heard about that. I haven't used it, but Retin-A kind of like burns my skin, so i rather go with a hyaluronic acid product that's really going to work very, very well. I also use this, which you can get. It's a hydrodynamic ultimate moisture for your eyes. It's by Murad. It's called Murad Hydration. I use this underneath my eyes every single night without fail. I use the Essence, which is the Atomy. Essence is kind of like Unique's Serum, if you know what Unique's Serum is. Um, it works great on your skin. Um, and then I have the, the Atomy Eye Cream, which I double whammy on my eyes because, you know what, as you get older, you really want to take care of your underneath of your eye area. And then I've got, what's the last one? I just had it. Got Zooks. Way to go. Oh, and then I've got the Nutrition Cream by Atomy. Okay, all of these Atomy products, you can get them on Amazon. I love them. You know, it all depends. People have their own preference, right? So it, it all depends on what you like. I'm telling you what I like. Grooch, what are you talking about, Grooch? I don't know what you're talking about, but you're making me laugh. So I'm just trying to make this dry. I got my fan on. I'm letting it dry a little bit quicker. So this way we can go and we can peel it all off. And it peels off in one peel. One peel. Thank you for following. Thank you for liking this page. Thank you for tapping my nose and following. Thank you for sprinkling me out to public groups. That means the world to me. I do this peel once a week. If I don't do this peel once a week, I will use a mask. And usually it's the charcoal bamboo mask. I love the charcoal bamboo. But then once a month, I use an exfoliating mask because I got to get that dead skin off. So you have that one layer on top of your skin that's shedding. It's the dead skin. Every 27 days, your, your face is shedding skin and the new skin is coming in. So by using an exfoliant on your face, you're actually doing like a double whammy. It's exfoliating after 27 days, but after 14, you're exfoliating it again. So you're really getting down to that fresh, new, baby type of face skin. You know what I mean? So I do it, I exfoliate twice a month, twice a month. So, and then I'll use the charcoal bamboo. I'll use this one, which is a peel off mask. I never, ever liked um, peel off masks. They always hurt. This is the first peel off mask that I use that I love. Love it, love, love, love it. Because it doesn't hurt when you peel it off. It's not like you're, you feel like you're peeling off your skin, right? A lot of you have seen me use Unique's peel mask. Um, I don't remember the name of it. The, the peel off mask, the Unique one. And when I tell you, I was in tears. Everybody was cracking up at my expense. At my expense, everybody was laughing. But um, it really did hurt. It really did hurt. And you would go and peel it off and it was like, literally like peeling off layers off of your skin. So... <laughs> so, Grooch, how are you doing, boo? I hope everything's going good for you. I hope everybody else is doing awesome. 
Um, I'm just sticking my face near the fan closer so I can kind of like speed this up. So I'm not boring you guys. So I'm not boring ya. I think this side of my face is good to go because it's nice and shiny. Once it gets to that shine, you know that it's good. This side is not so shiny yet. I can still feel it a little wet. So I'm just going to turn my face and let that side get a little bit more dry because if it's not dry it's not going to peel and that's the whole thing you want it to peel you want it to peel hello christine bond what's handcuffs what did i miss what did i miss so we're doing we cleaned our face we took all our makeup off we did a deep cleanse now we're going and doing the peel off mask by Atomy. My favorite. I love it. I love it. I love it. So I'm just going to sit here one more second and make sure that it's dry on my face so I can peel it off. Hopefully, hopefully in one peel. Oh my God, Christine. Stop it, Chrissy Wissy. Stop it, Chrissy Wissy. Okay, so I think I'm going to try it. I know that this side's still a little not dry, but I'm going to start over here and I'm going to start peeling it up until I can get a free edge. See, it's not dry all the way. God, zooks. So that means it's not going to peel in one peel. It's not going to peel in one peel. Hold on. Hello, Cecilia. You're breaking my heart. <laughs> I'm trying to get to the edge here. Okay, there we go. And I got it in my hair. God, Zooks. Look at that. It's stuck in my hair. Cecilia, we're peeling off our face. Get out of the way, hair. Get out of the way. You watching, Sherry? Yeah, I haven't done skincare in a long time, so I figured why not. I know up here is dry, so you're never really supposed to peel down, but we're going to peel down. We're going to peel down, okay? So we're just going to go and start peeling. Look at this. We're going to start peeling it all off. Come down my nose. Let me open that. Okay. So I'm just going to peel this down. And you can already see my skin, right? You can already see how nice and pink it is. Take off the nose. Take it off the nose. <laughs> Ew! I sneezed. <laughs> Look at that. That's because it's not totally dry. Usually it's one peel, girls. One flip and peel and you're done. <laughs> Who's baking a cake? Who's baking a cake? I just came home and I had a salad. I need like some, some something sweet. I need something sweet. I don't know what. I might just have cereal. I might just have cereal. Look at this. See, it's all coming off, but it's coming off in pieces. And that's only because I am impatient. I'm an impatient Nelly. Impatient. Oh, I got you saying flipping all the time. Well, because I can't say the F word. That's why, Cecile, because if I could, if we were in my VIP or we were on Zoom, the F bomb would be flying. It'd be flying. Okay, so this is still not dry. And I'm kind of like killing it right now. Okay. Let me throw this in the garbage. Cecilia, 
You're breaking my heart. Now, if you want, you don't have to peel this off, by the way. I'm just saying. You can use water and take it off with water if you want. I just like the feeling of peeling it off because usually it peels off in one piece. It's not peeling off in one piece, though, right now. <laughs> and it's all over my fingers. All over the place. <laughs> It looked like a flower on your face. I didn't eat the pocky yet. I didn't eat the pocky yet. I'll eat it though. I'll eat it tomorrow. I'll eat it tomorrow. Okay. Well, that's all I can get off. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go and squeeze out this washcloth with warm water in it. Let me make sure I squeeze it out. And I'm just going to run it over my face just to get the rest off. And you'll see, you'll be able to see all of the, um, the rosy, the rosiness, rosy posing. Okay, I think I got it. Did I get it all? You see any more? We got any more? Okay, back in there. All right, let's go and dry our face. Oh, that feels so good. Oh, does that feel good? All right, now that's the hardest part. Now comes the, all the easy part. You'll Google what? Oh, Pocky. I don't have my Pocky book. <laughs> I don't have my Pocky book here. So I can't show the Pocky. All right. So remember when you're doing your skin, you always go from the lightest consistency to the heaviest and thick. So we're going to go with that lightest consistency first. So first we're going to go in with the essence. And the essence is like almost like a serum. It's almost like unique serum, and I'm just going to go and put this all over my face. And it feels divine. It feels divine. <laughs> and I just rub it in because it feels so good. And it feels nice and cool on your face, especially after you go and you do... A peel off mask or any other kind of mask, right? I always put it on my decollete because you're gonna get those little lines, those fine lines when you get older. You ain't gonna like them very much. So then I'm gonna go in with my um, SPFRX, my C serum that has the hyaluronic acid in it. If I could open it because my hands are all greasy. And it comes in a little test tube like this. So I'm gonna go like this. That's probably way more than I need. But I'm going to go and put it. It's like water. It's a water consistency. So you're just going to go and put it all over your face, down your neck, do your decollete, get the booby area. And now what I do is I let that dry by itself. I let it dry with the fan. Hello, Miss Hazel. Lordy, Lordy, jumps. <laughs> Lordy, Lordy, Miss Molly, Lordy. Hi, Melly Me, Melly Mill. Melly Mill, how are you, Melly Mill? All right, here we go. This is it. This is the bomb diggity right here. This is the Revital Lift 1.5% pure hyaluronic acid, okay? This I use every day, every night. I use about, I'd say, a half a vial, and I squeeze it all. That's just, like, so good. It's like your face is waiting, and it's just like, come on, baby. Come on, baby. Let's get rid of those wrinkles and those crinkles, right? 
So I rub it all over my face, nice and gentle, like all over. And I let it dry down my neck over here because this is where you get those lines, right? And you might as well use it all up. Don't leave it on your hands. Rub it into your hands if you have to, but get it all gooey gooey. I'm good. I am good. Whose birthday is it? Happy birthday. Whose birthday is it today? Whose birthday? Did I miss it? Christine Bond, it's your birthday. Happy birthday, Chrissy Wizzy. Aw, happy birthday, Chrissy. Christine Bond is 35 years old, girls. Let's wish her a happy birthday. She is the youngest looking 35 I ever saw. Okay, so let's go in with the eye cream. <laughs> We're going to go in with the Atomy eye cream. I put it on my nail. That's the way I do it. And I just pat it like so. And like so. All right. I do a lot. You are backwards, th 63. You're 36. I said that. Why aren't you agreeing with me? Agree with me, Chrissy. Okay, so I'm patting this in underneath and on top of my eyes. Okay, this is the eye cream by Atomy, and I let it just soak in, and I pat it, and I let it just soak in. 63, Chrissy, I can't believe you're 63, Christine. You do not look it at all. Everybody wish Chrissy Wissy a happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. All right. So, now I'm going in with the other one, the other eye cream. The Hydrodynamic Ultimate Moisture for Eyes. And this is the Murad Hydration. All of the beauty boxes for June went out. La, 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 la. So whoever got it, it is in the mail. You should be getting it any day. Let me know when you get it. Let me know how you love it. Let me know what you think of it. I know. Right, Cecile? She does not look her age at all. She never did. She always looked young. She's got that young, youthful look about her. Absolutely. Absolutely. Isn't she beautiful? She's gorgeous. Christine Bond is gorgeous. Gorgeous. Okay, so I'm going to go in first with the Atomy Nutrition Cream, okay? And I'm going to put that all over my face. I'm going to put it in my hand, and I'm just going to go like this, and it's going to go all over the face. She is. She's absolutely gorgeous. We all know Christine Bond. If you don't know Christine, go look at her profile picture. Look at her pictures with her Gordy and her doggy and her puppy and all that. Okay, so I'm just going to go and rub this in. Oh, my face feels so good. It feels like a new face. It does. It feels like a new face. And then last but not least, last but not least, we're going to go in with, and this is, they don't even have it anymore, okay? This is when Unique was really good, okay? When Unique was really good was when they had their royalty line, okay? This, I scooped up a million of them because I loved it. And this is their nighttime correcting cream the time correcting night cream um i absolutely love it i've got a bunch of them still 
I love it because it has a little teeny scoopa, a little scoopa poopa. And then I take it off and I wind up scooping some of it out. Oops, something just fell. And I put it on my face over there, over there. I scoop a little bit and I put it up here. And then I scoop a little bit and I put it right there. Make sure that I got every last drop, every last droplet. Close it back up. And this is the nighttime correcting cream. You are not the oldest in the room, Grooch. Um, I will see how many I got. If I got a lot of them, Hazel, I'll get I'll give you one. You don't have to buy it, I'll give you one. I just gotta look. I got all my unique stuff packed away. Because I don't use it. I don't really use unique anymore. Um, I use products that I am used to using from my whole makeup career. I mean, very few things will I use from Unique. Um, I'll tell you right now, what do I use from Unique? I use their um, cleansing stick. I use their shine wipes. I love their shine wipes. I will, I will always say that. Love, love, love their shine wipes. Um, I use a lot of their brushes still. A lot of their brushes I'll use, but um, everything else, I don't use their Epic Mascara. I don't use the 4D. Um, I am hooked on the Wander Beauty, which all of you know. Mile High Club is the best mascara on the planet. Um, I use their, I use the um, Hydrating Primer. I like their Hydrating Primer, so I do use that still. And I think that's really all I use from Unique. I don't use anything else. I sold everything that I, the everything Unique. I sold everything. I think the only thing that I have left is I got the robe, the purple robe, which I love because it's cushy soft. It's bougie. So I had that. And then I have um, the two blankets that I've got. And... I've got, of course, all of my, um, I got my, all of my medallions, all the things that I've won, you know, I, I, I kept them because those are all milestones, things that I've done that I was very proud of. Reaching green elite status with Unique was a big thing. So I got their, their trophy or their plaque from that. I've got, um, the brush belt. I've got all of my little charm still you know all the things that I've won you know all the things my, my trip to the Bahamas I kept all of that I kept the um empower you I kept all of my uh unique foundation stuff my bracelet my my necklace that I got when I went to the unique foundation for women who were sexually molested as children Anybody can go to that. I'm going to just say it again. I'm not with Unique, and it doesn't really have anything to do with it. But I will say this. If you or anybody you know was sexually molested as a child, the Unique Foundation has a safe haven retreat that anybody can go to. Anybody. Not a Unique presenter. No problem. For absolutely free. I went to the one in Georgia last year. And I came out a totally different person. And I could say that without a, without a question. Because they have, um, what's it called? Oh my gosh. They have um, people on site for everything. For anxiety, um, depression, um, post-traumatic stress disorder. They have therapists there. You do group therapy. You can do single therapy. Um, you do yoga. You do meditation. You do Tai Chi. You do um, all these things that help you calm down and relax because if anybody's like me, I am high strung. I am wired to the hilt. My brain does not shut off. That's right. Mile High Club Mascara is the best. Lisa Barillo Retino, how are you? The Mile High Club is by far, and, and you know I've been doing makeup for 30-something years, 
right? So um, the Mile High Club is the best mascara I've ever used. And that's the God honest truth. It is the best mascara I have ever used. And I'll tell you something else. You know what else why I love it? Because it's so easy coming off. It, when you wash your face, it comes off like so easy. You don't have to scrub, right? You don't have to scrub your eyes. Um, if you use the unique cleansing stick or you use, uh, which one is this? This is the bifacial. I use this a lot. This is double action eye makeup remover. I use this a lot for my eye makeup. It's very sensitive, so I use a cotton ball. My eyes, so I'll just go and I'll place the cotton ball on it and let it absorb and loosen up all of the makeup that you have on your eye, and then I just swipe it away and it's gone. This is really, really good. It's called Bifacil, F-A-C-I-L. Um, it's double action eye makeup remover, and I love it. I love it. I don't even know where I got it, to be honest with you. It says shake before each use. Um, it is by Lancome. Okay, there you go. It's Lancome. Of course, that's why I love it. I love all Lancome products. I, I really do. Lancome is really, really good. I bought this um, yesterday. One of my favorite perfumes ever. Is really the only perfume I ever wear. It's called Angel. I don't know if any of you have worn Angel. Um, Angel is my favorite perfume. I don't know if you've ever smelt it, but I wound up going to my distributor with Tia yesterday. Tia came with me to my distributor. I bought another wig. Oh, I got to show you the wig. <gasps> I got another wig. It's blue. It's blue. It's a blue wig. It's gorgeous. So, any, anywho, I forgot all about the wig. Otherwise, I would have worn it, but no, not really. Not with skincare. But um, thank you, Lisa. And I really should do it more often. I did a peel. I peeled off. Um, I used the uh, Atomy peel-off mask. That's how we started off. We took off all our makeup. We did the peel-off mask. And then we went from the lightest consistency all the way up to the thickest. That's the way you want to work your products, okay? From the most watery to the thickest. That's the order you want to go in. Um, I redid some of my nails today. We went and did, um, I wound up, I don't know why. I was just so bored. This one's clear on one side, and then I, on the other side, I kind of marbleized it. So they're all kind of marbleized right now on one side, and the other side is um, the lace foil. And then I added some rhinestones. I put some rhinestones on this finger. We got three on that one. I think we put three on this one. Three on that one. This was the black, all black nail. And I just added um, some marbleizing to that. Because I figured, ah, I didn't really want one whole black nail. So that's another one. The other black nail that we marbleized. So these are the nails that I did for today. I was bored at work. What could I tell you? So, anywho, about the perfume. If you've never heard of Angel, okay, you've got to go to, like, Kohl's has Angel. Target has Angel. Um, perfume Mania has Angel. And my distributor has the oil Angel, okay? This is um, pure essential oil, all right? And when I tell you, you take this and you put your finger on top and you go like that, you put this down and you got the oil on, all you got to do is put it between both your fingers, a little behind your ears, a little on your wristy poos, and you're going to be smelling like angel all day long. I love it, love it, love it. They have this essential oil in every kind of perfume, white diamonds, um, all the all of your favorite perfumes. But I couldn't believe I found it in Angel. So if anybody loves Angel and wants me to get them one of these, let me know. Let me know, okay? This is the big one. It's $20, okay, for the big one. So if you want this, let me know. I'm not sure what the smaller size is. 
but this is the bigger version, okay? It even says, our version of angel contains pure essential oils. Um, if you want angel, let me know. If you have a favorite perfume, I can get it probably in the same size. Um, white diamonds. What's some other popular perfumes? I don't even know because I only wear angel. A lot of people say that angel's more of a winter scent. I don't care. I wear it all year round. I absolutely love the smell of angel. Cecile, you've smelt it before. Jesse, you've smelt it before. <gasps> It's so good. It's so good. I even use it as a cuticle oil because it's an essential oil. So you can use it as a cuticle oil and just rub it onto your cuticles. And your hands are going to smell like angel all day. You're going to get the whiff. You're going to get the whiff. Hi, Jade. How are you? Long time no see, boo. Long time no see. So now we got to do something with these lips. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to exfoliate my lips. A lot of us don't exfoliate. And what happens is when you don't exfoliate your lips, this is what they look like. Okay? They're filled with dead skin. Absolutely, Rose. I can get it anytime, baby. Beautiful. Uh, apps, Sherry, I know they have beautiful. Clinique Happy Heart. If Tia, Tia, if you can just write those down for me. Right, Cecile? Everybody asks me what I'm wearing all the time. Or if they are an angel wearer, they'll be like, you're wearing angel. You're wearing angel. I'm like, how'd you know? I love it. So, yeah, it's it's ridiculous. So Tia, write down, write down those ones. Um, beautiful, um, angel. Anybody else wear a certain type of perfume, a certain brand? I will look and see if they have it. If you want me to get it right off the bat, let me know because I'll be going with Tia the next time. I don't know if Tia's coming out this weekend again, but if she comes out this weekend, we'll make another trip to the beauty supply um, and we will pick it up for you. So I'm going in with the lip exfoliator and watch the difference in the color of my skin. Okay, see the lips right now? Watch. I'm going to put it on. Now you can use any kind. You can use sugar and, and olive oil, like I said, DYI. If you don't have a lip exfoliator... And I'm just doing my lips. Close this up. Now this is just sugar. It's a sugar scrub. That's all it is. And you can do it with olive oil and sugar. That's it. Take it, put it on your lips, and then you can go like this. It's just going to take longer. I have no patience. So I use my finger. And I just rub it all into my lips. And I only, not only do I do my lips, I do along the outside of my lips. Why? Because you know I line my lips all the time, right? I'm lining my lips all the time. So I don't want my lipstick or my lip liner to bleed. So doing this, you're exfoliating, you're taking a layer of the skin off. So it's, it's less of a chance that it's going to bleed. That's right. Zero calories jumps. It's sugar without the calories. So then you're going to take a towel and you're going to wipe your lips and you're going to see how rosy pink your lips look. Watch. And you can actually see the dead skin. Like it looks brown on the towel. Look at how rosy. They're really rosy, right? Rosy bakala, I got rosy lips. So now they're all super soft, super, super soft. But now we exfoliated. But what do you have to do after you exfoliate? You have to replenish, re-moisturize. So I'm going to tell you right now, one of my favorites, it's right here. Blistex. It is called Triple Essentials. I love it. 
I love it. It's a really true moisturizer. It's just a clear balm, but it's really, really, it's got a good flavor, a good taste. It makes your lips really, really moisturized. I don't usually like Bliss Text, but this one I love. Thank you for sprinkling, girls. Sprinkle to all of those groups that you belong to. You're over 30, over 40, over 50 groups. Your Italian-American groups, your makeup groups, your nail groups, your local groups. Every group that you belong to that's public, sprinkle away. Get your top fan badge. Get your Be like Danielle, top fan plus one. She's got her top fan badge and she's got her sprinkle badge. So I'm going like this. And if my lips feel awesome right now. They feel awesome. And if they feel like butter. They feel like butter, right? They do. They feel like butter because we exfoliated, took all the dead skin off, and now we just re-moisturized all of the lips, okay? That's really super important. Very, very important to do. And then what I usually do at the end of the night is if I can find it. Hold on a moment. Hold on a moment. Now, if I do this during the day, what I will do is I will go on my poor professional and I'll show you a little bit because it doesn't really matter. It's It's got a little color to it. See, it's got a little color. And I'm only going to use a little bit. I'm going to put it in my hands and I'm going to go like this. And I'm just going to go and put it all over my face. And what this, what this does is it's actually a primer for your makeup. But I love it because it's also a primer for your skin. It just makes your skin feel awesome. And this is called the Pore Professional. Okay? I think it came in one of my beauty boxes a while ago. And I never used it. Never used it until recently. Until recently. So I'm just going to go and... Make sure that that's all in my skin. Down my neck. My hair's a wreck. My hair's a wreck. And then last but not least is if you have puffiness under your eyes, listen, I think I threw one of these in everybody's beauty box and we've got a ton of them left. A ton of them. This is the anti-aging dark circle and puffiness serum. I will go and I'll put it underneath my eyes. Keep it in your fridge. It's ice cold. It takes down all that puffiness. If you have dark circles or anything like that, I love this. Dollar Store Girls Dollar Tree. Okay? You can get this in Dollar Tree. It is the bomb diggity. I'm telling you, for a buck... It is so worth it. So, so worth it. It's okay, Christy. You ain't late for no party. We just took off all of our makeup. We did some skincare. You are welcome here late, early, tomorrow, yesterday. You're welcome here anytime you want to be here. How's that? I love yous all. Thank you for sprinkling. Rodan and Feels Skincare. My cousin sells Rodan and Feels. She's been with Rodan and Feels. God. It's got to be like 10 years maybe. 8 years. Something like that. She's She's been with Rodan and Feels for years. It's put out by two dermatologists. Yes. What's it called, Grooch? This is called... Skin Nutrition's New York. Of course, it's from New York. Come on. It's from New York. <laughs> and this is what it looks like. And when you open it up, look, there's the little rolly ball. It's got a rolly ball. You get it in Dollar Tree for a dollar. And you put this in your refrigerator. It is, you wake up, you make your coffee, you put it on your eyes. You are set. You are set. I got to eat my cereal with my girls. I do. Really? 
Really? We got to do a Zoom meeting? Oh, my God. What was the name of it, Cecile? Wait, I think I missed it. Cecile, have you ever tried Rodan and Feel skincare? Um, what did you buy, though? Which, which skincare product did you buy, Cecile? You going to Dollar Tree tomorrow? I'm telling you, it's a red little rolly ball. You cannot miss it. It's for, it says it right here. It says Age Defy Dark Circle and Puffiness Cream. That's what it's called. You miss my ass? Good deal, Mary. Thank you, Miss Mary. Mary is a top fan on my page. Thank you, boo. I appreciate it. Um, Chrissy, how am I holding up with the craziness in the world? Um, well, I'll tell you one thing. Raleigh, North Carolina, where I'm very close to, they were having riots, and it was so bad, so bad. I understand the peaceful protesting and all that stuff, but when it comes down to these idiots, black and white, that are going and bashing in storefront windows and going in and looting jewelry stores and CVS and all these other stores for whatever reason. They could be pissed off all they want, but that is wrong. That is wrong. Skin brightening. Okay, Cecile, I'm going to look at that. I'm going to look at that because I always look for new skincare products all the time. But I think that, you know, there's a difference between peaceful protesting and rioting. And that's what was going on here for two days straight. Rioting. Tear gas. I mean, babies. I mean, which I would never do. I mean, parents wanted to teach their children about peaceful protesting. Okay, I get that. But you don't know what's going to happen. And you're not going to go and take them in the dark at night. If you want to take them, take them during the day, right? But we here in Raleigh, they were showing these mothers bringing their children and these fathers bringing their sons um, to these so-called peaceful protests that turned out to be horrible and went wrong. Okay, went totally wrong. And they would throw in tear gas. And these poor babies, their eyes were tearing and burning. They had water stations set up all along Fayetteville Street, which is the main strip in Raleigh, um, just to get the tear gas. The tear gas not only burns your eyes, don't forget, it burns your whole face. So they were trying to get, they were handing out towels. They had Water stations everywhere. It, it's just crazy. It's a yellow tube. Okay, Cecile, I'm going to ask my cousin about it. I know they're protesting everywhere, and I know that New York was really bad, of course. Um, but I think that it's not a black and white thing anymore. It, it really isn't. It's not a black or white thing. It's a I hate cops thing. I hate um, the military thing. I hate, why, why did Trump have the military come and, you know, enforce peace? You know, uh, it's just, it's just horrible. It really, like, I was just talking to one of my clients today. Never, ever have we ever thought, first of all, with the COVID, right? Never did we think that we would ever see anything like this in our lifetime. Now, they're not even talking about COVID anymore. They're not even talking. You turn on CNN, what are they talking about? The riots, the looting, um, the peaceful protests gone bad. It's just crazy. It's just crazy. Absolutely, Belinda. In Binghamton. Yeah, I know. An elderly couple got beat up, Kirk. Christy, oh my God. Well, I know here in Raleigh, there was a restaurant. I think it was an Italian restaurant. I'm not, don't mock my words, but I think it was an Italian restaurant. And the owners of the Italian restaurant were standing right in front of their, right in front of their business, holding their gun, holding their gun like this. 
You want to go in? You want to loot my store? Go ahead. I'm going to shoot your ass. I'm going to shoot you. So if you want to go and loot my store, go ahead. Be my guest. Be my guest. And you can meet my little friend. Okay? Here's my little friend. So nobody touched his store. Nobody looted. Nobody passed him and his partner. They were both packing and it's legal. Okay, it's legal to have a gun in North Carolina, um, a concealed carry or an unconcealed. And listen, nobody bothered them. Nobody bothered them. Did you see that, Janet? Did you see it? Yeah, they were not going to let nobody go and put power over them and get into their store. Oh, my God. Really, Christy? That's what I mean. I mean, a jewelry store. See, this is just white trailer trash and black trailer trash. I'll say it. There's white bad and there's black bad. There's Hispanic bad. There's Chinese bad. Every race has a good and a bad, right? Every single one. I've seen white trailer trash. I've seen black trailer trash. I've seen Hispanic trailer trash. And when I say trailer trash, those are the ones that are breaking in bashing the windows, going into the jewelry stores and bashing and breaking the glass of all of the jewelry displays and grabbing all the jewelry, right? What does that have to do with this poor man that got killed? Absolutely nothing. They can say that they're mad and all this and that's why they're doing it. That is a lame effing excuse. It's a lame excuse. You can be mad all you want. That is, number one, it's stealing. It's breaking and entering. It's a felony. I mean, come on, people, right? It's just, it's just crazy. If you want your voice heard, then do it peacefully. Do a peaceful protest. I know the one day, which I think was yesterday, was the first day that Raleigh did not have a really bad day. And it was one man that got in touch with a police sergeant. They both spoke together about it and they planned this peaceful protest. And it went off without a hitch. Nobody got hurt. Nothing got broken into. No looting. Um, and it went great. And it was a person that wanted his voice heard. He called up the sergeant. They got together and they made this protest and it was peaceful and it worked out great. They were on microphones at the, at the government building and they were all saying what they wanted to say. They all bent, bent down. Even the police officers bent down on one knee, um, you know, out of respect and all of that for the young man that got killed. Um, I still don't get the third degree murder charge. I will not agree with that at all. Um, first degree, like I said yesterday, I don't believe it was first degree. And the reason why is first degree, degree, first degree murder is more of a premeditated, like you planned it, right? You knew that you were going to go and kill that person. I don't think those, even those cops, as bad as they are, I don't think that they realized that they were going to kill this guy. But second degree murder, absolutely, absolutely. And like Rosie Bacala said, which got me to when I watched it today, not only was that poor man saying, listen, I can't breathe, I can't breathe. What was the last thing he said? Does anybody, did anybody hear who he asked for? Who he was talking to? Does anybody remember that? If you didn't hear it, he called out for his mother. He called out for his mother. That was one of the last things he said. He called out for his mother, this poor man. I don't care if it had to do with counterfeit money. I don't care what was involved prior. All I know is they detained him. They put him in cuffs. That was enough. Once you're in cuffs, there's nothing you can do but run. Okay? And he wasn't running. He was down on the floor. So he wasn't going nowhere. And these officers, the sergeant and the police officer that pinned him down with his leg... 
what was in his mind, I would love to know what he was thinking. I would love to know what he was thinking. But all I know is that he called out for his mother and that was it. Like Rosie said the other day. She, I didn't hear it until today. I played it back. Um, I didn't hear him call out for his mother until today. And I sit here, no joke, with flipping goosebumps right now. Because can you imagine knowing that you're ready to get passed out? Not knowing maybe that you're going to die, but knowing that you're getting knocked out because you're, you're blacking out, right? And you're laying on the ground with a police officer on your neck, and all you could do is call out for your mother. Call out for your mother, and these mother flipping cops. And I have to say this too, and, and people will disagree with me. The one who was videoing this whole scenario, what was he doing? Why didn't he stop the video or give it to somebody and go and like, see, I would have probably been arrested or shot. Because if I saw that going on, I would have went after the cops. And I would have said, you're killing him. You're flipping killing him. Get off of him. And I know that people were screaming, like, he can't breathe. He can't breathe. But, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Four cops. That's right. And I agree with you, Christy. One or two, you're going to have... You're going to have one bad egg in everything, in everything. You're going to have a bad cop. You're going to have a bad police officer. You're going to have a bad fire department guy. You're going to have a bad, a bad teacher. You're going to have a bad principal, a bad boss, a bad employee. There's always going to be one bad egg out of the bunch, right? But it doesn't mean that all teachers are bad. It doesn't mean that all bosses are bad. All employees are bad. You know, all police officers, all fire department, all government employees are bad. But see, that's what they're doing now is they're making it where, like I said, it's not about black and white anymore. It's all about the police. And they're making it to where the police, every one of them are bad. And that is wrong. That is wrong. And that, and why do you, I mean, people, listen, I, whether you like Trump or you don't like Trump, Trump was right to get the to get the military involved. He was absolutely right because if he didn't, the, there weren't enough police officers to stop all these people. God forbid it really got bad. There was not enough police officers. That's why he called for the National Guard to come and help. It wasn't to take the National Guard and come there and beat people up. It was to go there to protect the people. But see, there's so much hatred now for the government, for the military, for the police officers, for the fire department, for anything like that, that no matter what, they're just all looked at. They're all put together in a big bunch and every one of them are bad. And that is wrong. That is so wrong. So I just pray you know, I pray every night, and I do, I pray every night that this is going to calm down. And, you know, the same thing happened with Rodney King, right? We all remember Rodney King and all of that stuff. And the same, look look at with O.J. Simpson. I mean, they were rioting with him. I mean, because he was innocent, even though he's not innocent. He's He was guilty. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just voicing my opinion again. Just, you know, you could believe he was innocent. I think, very much so, I think, that he was guilty. Guilty. Right? I think he was guilty. But they protested when, when he was let go and he was found innocent for whatever reason. You know, if, you, if the glove doesn't fit, you must acquit that whole bullshit. Well... I just, I think he was guilty. There isn't. There's no respect anymore. And you know what, Danielle? The sad part is it doesn't just stop with what's going on now. I'm sorry. Respect goes a long way. And nowadays, compared to years ago, even children with their parents, I see a lack of respect. 
children with their parents a lack of respect. But I also blame that on the parents because they are not instilling respect and integrity in their children. I grew up where, listen, you shut up. You don't say a word until you are spoken to. Um, you respect your elders. And when they speak to you, then you can talk. You might think that that was bad. I grew up in a really strict Italian household. And when you went over somebody's house, you sat in the living room with your hands crossed, nice and quiet, no TV. God forbid you asked to turn the TV on. You're sitting on that freaking vinyl Mazzola gold couch that your grandmother had or whoever, your aunt, and you're sitting there. You go off a bit, no TV. You can't ask for anything to drink, right? You have to wait for them to ask you, oh, Diane, do you want something to drink? Oh, yes, ma'am. Yes, please, right? That is how it was. And you know what? You might say to yourself, well, that's really overboard. But you know what? For me, it wasn't because it instilled respect, it instilled integrity, it instilled that anybody older than you, you need to respect them. They've earned it, okay? They've earned living longer than you. They know more than you, okay? Some people might be like, oh, they're stupid, but I respect so and you all know I respect elders and I love the elderly, I love them. Their stories will never be told again unless you hear them with your own ears. So that's the way, right, Grooch? You were brought up that way, too. I was afraid to ask to go to the bathroom, too. Absolutely. But now it's like the kids control the parents. It's not like the parents control the kids anymore. Kids have such control over their parents. It's crazy. Kids don't go to school. What the frig? Just because they don't want to go to school, maybe they're having a little anxiety attack. Hello? Um, I could have did that. I could have said that when I was young. And my mother was like, you're going to school. What are you, out of your mind? You're going and you're getting an education. Just because you're having an anxiety attack or a panic attack or you're depressed a little bit does not mean that you don't go to school. I'll get, I will go to the doctor, I'll get you on medicine, but you're going to school, okay? Um, they don't want to go to school anymore. They're getting pregnant at 12 years old. 12, 11. I even heard of an 11-year-old. I was playing with Barbie dolls at 11 and 12 still. Didn't know the first thing about sex and having babies at 12 years old. And then the really thing that drives me crazy is that the mothers of these babies having babies are letting these babies go through the pregnancy, have the baby, and then who's stuck watching these babies? Who's stuck watching these babies? The grandmother, right? Because the 12-year-old certainly has no clue how to take care of a baby because she's just a baby. And then you got to deal with the one that got her pregnant and that family, right? And that family. Then you got to wonder, is she going to go back to school? Oh, no, she's not going to go back. To she's a mother now. We'll just let her get her G GED. Screw that. Screw that. That's what I mean. Parents got to take the bull by the horns now because look at what's going on here. Hello, this world is like falling the flip apart. That's right. My mother used to scale. My mother used to say that all the time. You want to cry? I'll give you something to cry about. You better stop it right now. You better stop it right now or I'll give you something to cry about. Now... If you ever hear that, what does the child say? Oh, I'm going to call the police. This is child abuse. Child abuse. Child abuse? I'll give you flipping child abuse. Get the hell over here. I, I was a hair puller. I pulled my daughter's hair. Hey, I believe in, you know what? I spanked her when she needed to be spanked. I did. 
I'm sorry. If that makes me a bad mother, I'm a bad mother. But she grew up. She went. She got her associates, a bachelor's, her master's, her doctorate. She is way up in, in the upper echelon of, like, Valero headquarters in Texas. She is making buku bucks. She's got a great husband, a great life. Um, she just found out she's pregnant. She's having a baby. I'm going to be a grandmother for the first time ever. Not even thinking I was ever going to have a baby. So I must have did something right. That's the way I look at it. I must have did something right. Was I perfect? Absolutely not. I don't think any, any parent is ever perfect. None of them are ever perfect. But I tried my hardest. You learn from your mistakes, right? You learn from your mistakes. Um, I've apologized to my daughter for things that, that went on when she was growing up because I was very strict. As a lot of you know, I was a strict mother. I did not let her sleep over anybody's houses, but that all stems back to because I was molested as a child and I didn't want it happening to her. So hence, I felt if she was home with me, Rather than sleeping at somebody else's house, there was less of a chance of her getting molested. And as bad as it was for her, I'm glad that I did it because she didn't. And she had her friends come and sleep at our house. She hated me for it until she was in her 20s, until I finally sat down and told her, you know, why I was the way I was. Absolutely, Rose. That's right, Mel. Absolutely. I'll be damned if you don't respect me. If you don't want to respect me and you don't want to live by the rules in this house, there's the door. Just remember, you leave this house, it ain't a revolving door. It ain't a revolving door. You leave this house, you ain't coming back to live. You ain't coming back to live. Yes, you can come and visit. If you ever need me, God forbid there's an emergency, I'm here for you. But you know what? You're not going to go and leave and then come back with your tail between your legs. And then I take you back in and what? Three months later, the same thing happens and you leave again? No, that ain't happening. And it never did. That's right. You got a bed sleep in it. That's right. And you make your bed, you sleep in it. Just like, you know, my mother used to say, anything happens, you if, you, if something happens and you get in trouble in school or anything like that, you made your bed. You're going to suffer the consequences. I ain't bailing you out. You go and steal something and the police find out about it and they take you to jail, you're staying in jail for that night. You think I'm going to come and take you out of jail? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. So was fear instilled in me? Absolutely. Fear was instilled. Absolutely. But you know what? It kept me on the straight and narrow. I never went. I never did anything wrong. I never stole anything. I never got in trouble. I never, like, did drugs. Uh, I think I smoked pot once and I fell asleep. It was the worst experience of my life. I hated it. Um... Did I drink? I went out to, to clubs back then. Remember the discos back in the day? Yeah, I would have some drinks. I would have some drinks and I would dance and stuff like that. But that was the extent of me, like, you know, going against the grain. Going against the grain. But I would never change my child. Even with me getting molested for all those years... I would never change my childhood, never. Because you know what? If I was growing up today, like I feel bad for the women, for the mothers who have children that are growing up now, now, in this time, with the, pardon me, the riots, with the COVID-19, with kids getting pregnant, with gangs. Oh my God, if you, I mean... I had no, I, I must be like in La La Land because the gangs that are out there, I mean, they're killing people. They're stealing. They're beating the crap out of old people, the elderly. Um, it's just gangs are like out of control, out of control. If you live in a, in a rural area where there's not much to do, 
and you've got to watch your kids because between that and drugs, you're done. You're done. That's all they got to do is do it one time. Do, do heroin one time. Do crack. Do ecstasy. Whatever the drugs that are out there now. Right? One time. It only takes one time. And they are hooked. Hooked. So I would be so flipping scared to have a child right now growing up. So if you do, please just, just know and let them know the consequences to their actions. Because all of the actions, there's a reaction, right? To everything you do, there's something, there's a circumstance that's going to happen after. And you don't want that after circumstance to be bad. You want something good to come out of it, right? So just, you know, put your foot down. Even if you have to start today, put that foot down. Let them know that they are not going to get the best of you. They're not going to make you feel bad. And then you're going to change your mind and not make them be punished. I believe that, you know, being punished is something that I did with my daughter. She was punished for a week. No TV, no, no TV, no hanging out with her friends. That was her punishment um, before all of the whole computer and telephone thing went. Then when she was in high school, if she ever got in trouble, I took a phone. Um, no TV, no friends, no phone, no computer. So, yeah, yep, Christy, you're right. Yep, broken homes. I... You know what? And I am I am to blame as well. But I I am, you know, I'm divorced. Um I could have stayed with my ex-husband. I could have. We all probably could have if you are, you know, divorced. But um being in a being a child of a broken home, of a divorced family, those two parents have to work together. They might hate each other, but you know what? You got to work together and, and raise that kid the best you can. You might not love each other anymore, but you know what? You got to love that kid enough to, to be cordial, to be not talking badly about the father to the child, not talking bad about the mother to the child. You know what I mean? That is just going to F that kid up so bad, so bad. Um, it's just, it's just a mess. It's just a mess. And I don't even know how we got on this subject, but, um, just know that you've got to love your kids more than you love yourself, but you're not a doormat and you have to demand respect. You got to demand respect. I would never have brought kids into this world. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know what? You don't know, Sherry, right? You don't know what's going to happen. I thought that life was going to be the same as when I was growing up, when I had my daughter. And thank God she grew I mean, my daughter's 33 now. Um, she grew up in a, in, a, in a good time, I think. She grew up in a good time. Now, having kids growing up now... This is not a good time. It's not. And she's pregnant. And it makes me, like, cringe. I'm so blessed and I'm so happy that she's having a baby and I'm going to be a grandma. But I'm just thinking, like, what's going to happen to my grandchild when, she, or when she's growing up? Because she's having a girl. When she grows up. What's life like going to be? What is it going to be like when she grows up? It's going to be worse than now. It's getting worse. Every decade, it's been getting worse. So, I don't know. I don't know. Um, I, I like my new job. I do. I like it. It's different, though. It's definitely different. Um, and I don't know how to explain it different. It's just different. <laughs> it's just different. Um... I'm not surrounded by a bunch of other nail techs. I'm by myself. Um, 
I think that I am very professional. I've always been very professional when it comes to my clients. I always try to give them the best service possible. But like I was saying earlier in this live, sometimes you get clients that, you know, you just don't click. You could be as nice as pie and you can treat them with the utmost, you know, dignity and respect and and you know, you, you're going to give the, go that extra mile, right? If they get a pedicure, you're going to give them a hand massage. Why? It's not included in it, but you're doing it because you want to. You want to give them a little extra, make them feel a little extra special. But even some of those clients that may, you do and you go that little extra mile, they still don't appreciate it. They'll still complain. You still have people that are nitpicky, right? That's with any job, any job. Okay, whether you, any kind of customer service job that you're involved in, you're going to have people that just are nitpicky, that don't like what you do, that they're going to come back and they're going to complain. Um, and I found that now that I'm doing nails now compared to when I had my salons back in the 80s, it's much different. Women, okay, just like children, are expecting a lot more. Just like children, you know, they're expecting so much out of their parents and for them to just like leave them alone and let them do their thing. Well, women are expecting, you know, total perfection. And if they don't get total perfection, then they're going to complain. They're going to complain. And regardless or irregardless, if it's the nail technician's, um, reason for the nails not being perfect, um, it doesn't matter. You're still getting scolded for it. And I think that if your nails are not perfect, if I'm doing a set of nails and those nails are not totally perfect, it's my reputation on the line, right? It's my reputation. So I'm going to do my hardest to make sure that they are perfect. Now, if they come back and say, oh, well, my nails are chipping. You know, you did gel and they're chipping on the ends. Okay, now I gotta think, it's been less than a week. Less than a week. And when you're getting gel over your own nails, just a gel manicure, your nails should not be, they should not be chipping. There's no way they should be chipping. And I've been doing nails for 30 years, right? 30, three zero. Since I was in high school, BOCES, okay? If anybody remembers BOCES in high school. So I know something's not right. What is it? So you go down the line. Could it be this? Could it be that? Could it be this? Could it be that? So it's the polish. Now, it's not my polish. It's the polish that was in the salon when I went in there. So my thing is, if it's gel and it's goopy, whoever owned that tray of polish if the gel is goopy what's the first thing that you would think of doing using um uh thinner right lacquer thinner in it so you're going to go and put lacquer thinner or nail polish thinner in it shake it up and it's going to be like brand new but then guess what nobody uses it for a while a year goes down the line and guess what it's goopy again they go put more nail thinner in it. And before you know it, it ain't gel anymore. Because you put so much nail thinner in that bottle that it's not gel anymore. So here I am coming into this new job and I'm doing their nails like I normally would under the UV light, letting them cure for 30 seconds, do the second coat, cure it for 30 seconds, top coat it, make sure I get all the tips, right? Put it back in and... I'm thinking they look great. And they did look great. Two or three days later, the owners are getting complaints that the nail the nails are chipping. So Bosies for culinary arts. <laughs> Christy. So you know, they complained and I heard about it and, you know, I'm not going to argue with the people that own the, the, the salon, but 
I've been doing nails a long time, and I just think that my salary shouldn't have take, gotten taken out of that. You know, they, they wound up coming back. I redid their nails again. Um, and the, then there was other, other ones that got refunded their money. And it was taken out of my pay. And I don't think that was right. But it is what it is. It's not my salon. It's not my choice. It's not my thing to say. So, uh... Yeah, that's it. So, like I said, it's different. It's different. I would go back. Listen, there's no problem with going back. I mean, if you don't like something, obviously, yes, you're going to go back and say, listen, you know, I'm just not happy with this. And there's a difference with going, with, about going back and saying, listen, I'm really not happy with this. It's chipping a little bit or I don't like the color or whatever the case is, right? Um, and going back like that. But then... Or, on the other hand, somebody calling up being nasty and saying, look, I just want a refund. And the owner or the receptionist or whoever says, listen, come back in and we'll fix it. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll get you right. We'll, we'll make your nails look the way that you want. Um, we don't know because we can't see. So come in and she'll redo your nails. And some people are just like, nope, I want my money back. Nope, want my money back. And what are you going to do? So that gets taken out of my pay. Even though I did my best and I worked on them and did my best, it still got taken out of my pay. So that, you know, that's what it is. That's, you know, that's what it, that's what you get when you're working for somebody else. And I've always said, I've said it a million times it's really hard to work for somebody else. It's easy to own your own business because you can make your own rules and set your standards. And you know nails. I know nails, okay? Um, I, I know every aspect of nails from gel to acrylic to um, uh, uh, silk wraps. Who remembers silk wraps? Oh, my God, silk wraps fiberglass wraps back in the day, right? I mean, nothing has changed. Nothing has changed. The only thing that has changed with nails is that the acrylic does not smell as much and they have odorless acrylic now. So when you walk into a nail salon, you're not getting bombarded with that whiff of acrylic and nail polish and all that stuff. They have vented tables now, which take in all that dust and you're not inhaling it and it's causing you cancer. Um, I still, to this day, and all throughout my career of doing nails, I've never worn a mask. Never. So I probably got so much acrylic dust in my lungs. You know, I don't, I don't know. I just can't wear a mask. Can't do it. I can't breathe. Um, I know that the Vietnamese, the Orientals, wear the mask. I know that because I've worked for Vietnamese before. I've worked with Chinese Orientals before. I've worked for them. They've worked for me um, both ways. But, hi, Miss Lida. Yeah, I, some people I think that, Grooch, I do. Some people I think that they're just, you know, like you're, you're never going to make somebody happy. They're never going to be happy. They just want to come back in after a couple days and get another full set or or or, or repolish or whatever. But to be to be honest, they did have a reason to call up. They did. It was it was chipping. It was definitely chipping. The tips of their nails were chipping, and you know, I've never worked with a gel that has chipped off of the tip of their nails within three days. So, in my eyes, it's the polish. So, I went out and I bought my own polish. And I didn't buy a ton of it. I bought a bunch of polish at the nail, at the nail supply. And I'm going to try swaying some of the, these clients to try this, these other colors that I got. And see if that makes a difference. And see if that makes a difference. I'm reading yours, Christy. Hold on, Bo. 
I think it depends truly on the person. I've left salons with beautiful nails, noticed it wasn't perfect, but as you said, women's standards are high. I still pay tip above expectations because the work they did matters to me. I guess I'm too damn kind. No, you know what? Um, I be Listen, I believe that any kind of service industry, whether you're a waitress, you're doing nails, you're doing hair, um, you're doing facials, you're doing massage, you're doing anything, you know, service related. If you do not like the service, you're not going to tip as much. You're not going to tip as well. If you are over the moon happy, you're going to tip better. You are. And it also depends on where it's located. If it's in a, you know, low to mid income area, you're going to get a smaller tip. If it's in a mid to upper class area, you're going to get a bigger tip. That's what I found anyway. Um, not every single case, because I have worked in, in areas that weren't, you know, were more middle class, but I got, sometimes I got $20, especially around the holidays. Forget it. My regulars for a fill in at Christmas time, they would give me a $20 tip. No problem at Christmas, you know, or if they knew my birthday was coming, they'd send me, they'd bring me flowers, balloons would be hanging from my chair. You know, some clients I had for years, like seven, eight, nine years, I had the same clients every two weeks, like clockwork. You knew when they, their children had babies, you knew when they got married, you knew when they became grandparents, when they sold their house, when they got divorced, everything, because just like hairdressers, manicurists or nail technicians like myself, you are like a therapist. They come and they see you every two weeks and they want to talk to you, right? They want to talk to you about, you know, what's been going on because you're like, oh, hi, Sally. So what's been going on? How's the baby? And, you know, that's how I am. So I'm just, I'm just like that. But there's other people that some, some clients sit in the chair. They don't want to talk at all. And I get it. They're there to relax. They don't want to hold a conversation. They just want to give you their hands or give you their feet and just let you massage their legs and while well, they have their eyes closed. And I think that's great. I think the worst thing ever is people coming to get their pedicures and they're bringing their, their um, tablets or they're on their phone like this. The whole time I'm doing a, a pedicure, they're on their phones or on their tablets, and they're just, I'm like, this is supposed to be something relaxing, right? It's supposed to be something relaxing. Can't you put your phone away for a little while? Like an hour, a half hour, however long it takes. Hi, Jen. I have an eye um, mask, and it's, it's really nice. It's super soft. So every client that comes and sits in my pedicure chair, I will say, do you want me to put the eye mask on? It's got aromatherapy. It smells good. You can relax your eyes, um, relax, fall asleep if you have to, whatever you want to do. And do you know that maybe one out of 15 people will say yes? The rest of them, this is them. Right? They rather... It's not a relaxing thing. I guess it's, they say it is, but I can't relax while I'm on my phone or on my tablet or working. A lot of them come and they're still working. They're sitting there working. They're on their phone. They're doing this. I'm like, listen, when you come, just like put it away for a little bit. <laughs> That's all they say, right? I don't know if any of you do that. Do any, any of you do that? Like when you go and get a pedicure, you can't just sit there and relax and close your eyes and just zone out because I've got the spa music playing. You've got your feet in the bubbles and you're just, you got the massage on the chair and it's a heated massage and it's making you feel a pooji, gooji, gooji, right? And you can close your eyes and relax or you can... Be wide awake, stressed out because you're getting texts and you're answering the texts and you're arguing with your boyfriend and your kids are calling and all this other stuff. Shut your phone for a half hour. Shut your phone for an hour. I'm telling you, it makes a world of difference. It's like meditating for an hour. 
without having to deal with work and stress, the husband, the kids. Is it jumps? Hazel, you never, oh my God, Hazel, come to North Carolina, girl. <laughs> Tia, there was spa music, wasn't there? I think there was. It was low, though. No, because you got to, because I did you at my house, silly. Absolutely. And you know what, Christy? The same thing when you go to a restaurant. Me and Frankie went to a restaurant the other night. And we're sitting there. And I'm looking around. And him and I are talking. I'm looking around. And every single person sitting across from each other, they're on their phone. On their phone. Like, what happened to conversations? What happened? What happened? What happened to this world? That you can't go to dinner and have a conversation with the person that you're having dinner with. The phone is more important. What's going on on your phone is more important than spending time with the person you're sitting across from. I don't get it. I don't get it. I, it's just, it's mind-boggling to me. Yeah, I mean, just to meditate and close your eyes and just, you know, fall victim to relaxing, to what this person is doing to your legs. Because, listen, when I get a pedicure, they, like I'm like jello. <laughs> I'm like jello. Lift my foot when you need it because I ain't lifting crap. I am going to be so zoned out in la-la land that if you need my foot out of that water, you better be lifting it out of the water because I ain't lifting nothing. I'm paying you for a service. You're going to get a good-ass tip, but don't make me lift my leg. Lisa, oh my God, what is up with you girls? I would have a pedicure over a manicure any day of the week and twice on Sundays. Just somebody massaging my feet and my legs. I could care about the rest of my body. My legs and my feet. And they're just massaging. Ooh la la la. Ooh la la. I am like, dang. I would, I would do anything. I'd probably shoot somebody if you asked me to. <laughs> I would probably, I, I don't know what I would do. I'm like in such a bougie, like, mm, I'm just so relaxed when they're doing it. And it's it's almost like truth serum. Like they're talking to you and you're like, yeah, mm-hmm, yeah, this is good. This is so good. Yeah, right there. Oh, that feels so good, right? So if somebody was on the phone listening, you, who knows what they would think with, with me anyway. I'm like, yeah, right there, baby, right there. Get in there, right in, oh, yeah. <laughs> so hopefully nobody hears me because if they do, they probably think I'm having a really, really good time. You're the ticklish. I've had everybody's ticklish in some way or shape or form. I had a woman today that was really, I was doing the hot stones on the ball of her foot. I had the big hot stones and I was really getting in there. And then I'm going in between her toes with the hot stones and she's giggling and laughing. And then, of course, you go and you take the, uh, the pumice stone and you're holding the pumice and you're going like this on the heel that was it. She was done. She's like, I can't. I can't stop laughing. Stop it. Just stop it. And it's funny. It's funny. We have a good time. There's a lot of people that are ticklish. A lot. So don't think you're the only one. Absolutely not. So anyway, that's the story and I'm sticking to it. And I just figured I would come on and do some skincare. I love my feet rub too. I love my feet rub. Absolutely. So I'm working tomorrow. I've got to, um, my first client is at 1030 and then I'm all booked up until I think like seven or eight tomorrow night. So, um, I will be on tomorrow when I get home. 
I will come on and we'll do some makeup and I'll show you my new wig. I'll show you my new wig. It's awesome. Thank you, Hazel. I don't look awesome. My face looks good because it's healthy right now. It's moisturized. It's eating up all the juicy, all the 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 um, hyaluronic acid and all the moisture in my skin right now. It feels divine. So um, I hope you all sleep with angels tonight because, Lord, I'm going to be sleeping because I, I told you I fell today. That was another thing. I fell. I hurt my elbow. It's probably going to be black and blue. Um, my left knee and now my neck and my whole side is hurting. I was coming out of the door and making a left and my feet went that way. And the, there was like some powder or something on the floor that I slipped on. And I just wound up going down. But I went down hard. Really hard. I was not expecting that I was going to fall. And I went down hard. And it was on like ceramic tile floor. Ceramic tile. So... Yeah, I hopefully, I'm not, I think I'm going to feel worse tomorrow because you always feel worse the next day. So, uh, hopefully I'm going to be all right and hopefully I'll be able to make it around okay. But I want you to sleep with angels. I want you to know how strong parents you are, um, strong women you are. Uh, that you're not going to go and get taken advantage of by anybody. That you're going to stand firm with your decisions on everything. Don't give in because you feel badly. Um, if you are going to say something, say it with um, with gusto. Say it with like, mm, right? Oh, I'm all right, Christy. I'm just going to be sore tomorrow. I think that's it. But I want everybody to have sweet dreams. I want you to wake up with um, with an intention tomorrow to be the best version of you that you can be. Try to get rid of all of the negativity and all the bad shit that's going on, whether it's you're watching it on TV or it's happening in your own front yard. Try to just put that out of your mind and think of something happy, something that's going to make you feel at peace within yourself. Live in the moment. Don't live in the past, and you don't know what's happening in the future. So positive mindset brings positive life. Remember that. Stay and live in the moment. And if you can live in the moment, you can be happy more, more so during your whole day. As long as you are current and and mindful of where you are every minute of the day and you're not going and thinking of past things that are going to upset you or worrying about what's going to happen tomorrow. Tomorrow's not even here yet. You don't even know if you're going to be here tomorrow. So live in the present. God bless you. I will, um, I'm not going to really post selfies because there's nothing I have no makeup on. So I'm not going to post any selfies, but please make sure you start a watch party. If you haven't liked this page, please go up to the top, like the page, tap my nose, follow this page, and share it out to all of the groups that you belong to. 50s and over, 60s and over, makeup groups, skincare groups, Italian groups, any kind of groups. Just sprinkle me out and get me out there. That's all I ask. And I hope that you all have an awesome night. Really and truly, I, I think of all of you. I think of Hazel. I think of Lisa. Um, I think of Jumps. I think of all of you. Um, really, I do. And I'm not just joking. My Paisan, I think of you. I think of Tia. I think of Rosie Bacala. I think of all of the girls that come on here and watch me. Lauren and everybody that watches me and comes and spends time with me every single night. You have no idea how much I appreciate you. No idea. You will never, ever, ever fathom how much that means to me that you come and you spend your nights with me. It, it just means the world to me, and I want you to know that. So sleep with angels. God bless you, and I'll see you tomorrow night. If I have some chance tomorrow in between clients, I will post some things on my page. This way you know I'm alive. And um, take care of your skin. It's the only skin you got. 
Take care of your skin. Make sure you're exfoliating, moisturizing, doing your eye area, exfoliating your lips, right? And then just soak it all in with, with total moisture on your face. Good night, Christy. Thank you so much for coming on um, and being a top fan of mine. Tia and Lisa and Hazel and all of these, I love you. God bless you. Have an awesome night, and I'll see you tomorrow.